Hello and welcome to my how to read Unicode from websites such as Twitter tutorial. Um, turns out this is actually one of the higher requested videos and actually every time it's been requested it's been requested for Arabic. So that's what we're going to be using is Arabic although this will really work for any language. It doesn't have to be Arabic. It just is going to be Arabic in this case and this is going to be from Twitter. Now an interesting little tidbit for you guys. Um, the reason why so many people have requested this like I've gotten probably like, I don't know how many requests, but a decent amount of requests, and it's always Arabic, and so I was kind of curious, but um, Twitter usage by population uh, is the highest in Saudi Arabia. So over 30% um, of Saudi Arabia's population is on and using Twitter. So, so actually, um, it's pretty imperative that you know how to read the... Uh, Arabic Unicode because so many people like you know Twitter makes for a really good data sample for uh, especially something like or a place like Saudi Arabia but when you uh, get the output from Twitter it looks something like like this right and I actually took an image of the exact same uh, thing so like here is although that's Unix uh, Unix timestamp but this is the actual output right this is the Unicode here and then the output that we want is actually this right it's this uh, of course I probably don't really want to advertise that website but anyway this is the Arabic that we want to output from um, from that uh, previous message and actually interestingly enough Twitter doesn't even get this box right this is actually at heart as you'll see later on when we actually finally convert this <laughs> so we'll, we'll give you an even better representation than even Twitter gives you so probably one of the reasons why this is so highly requested that I give a tutorial on this is this right here. It's it's the fact that this is Unicode, and I think Unicode's a lot like uh, regular expressions, probably even more so than regular expressions. People just don't um, understand Unicode, and it comes up fairly rarely enough to the point where you can get by for a really, really long time, um, quite possibly even a whole career without ever considering what the heck Unicode even is. Um, so eventually it's going to be necessary <laughs> if you continue dealing with this to actually learn what Unicode is. So in this tutorial I'm not going to be teaching you guys exactly what Unicode is. It's just a data type basically. But as far as like how to actually work with Unicode, I'm not going to do that in this tutorial. This tutorial is going to be straight up tutorial on how to read Unicode from these kinds of websites and output exactly what you want. So um, that's what this tutorial will be. Eventually, I'll probably do one also on just like a holistic Unicode, what the heck is it, um, and how to work with uh, just Unicode in general. But for now, this will just be how to read any language, basically, that's been converted. So, um, that's right, you got ASCII characters, but um, any any language that uses another symbol besides, you know, our typical European uh, alphabet, you're going to be in trouble. So... So the first thing you want to do is let's just see uh, when we print S to console. Um, uh, you could probably either type this out while I was chit-chatting, or uh, I'll just put this in the description so you can just copy and paste it. But let's see what happens when we uh, print that to console. What happens? Well, you'll notice that it actually prints it to console, and it does a little something a little funny when you highlight it. Um, it's because Arabic is read uh, right to left so when you go to highlight usually when one highlights something one really wants the first character so as you highlight it's gonna give you the first second third character in the real way that you really wanted it but you just didn't know it so it's just automatically flipping for you so that's all that's happening there just in case someone's like what the heck um, anyway so that's that now You'll see when it when you print uh, out what this is, it looks great. But then what happens when we go to like save it? So let's say output file uh, equals open output dot text with the intention to append, and then output dot write. Um, what do we want? S, and then output dot close. And now let's write that. 
and you'll see that you actually end up with a pretty nasty little error here because it's trying to write it as ASCII code and this is not in the range of 128, right? So generally ASCII code, you're gonna have a zero to a 127 and that's just gonna be your typical characters. Whereas here, this is not your typical character, right? So, cause this is, you know, Unicode number 627, 644 and so on. And uh, just as another tidbit, Unicode usually, uh, I think it gives us 1.1 million total and we're not even close. I think we've used like 10% of that or something. So uh, just as a quick aside, I'll talk more about that whenever I do a Unicode tutorial. But anyway, obviously these are all exceeding that typical number. So what do we need to do? Well, this is where you have to uh, use encoding and decoding. Now, again, part of the issue is that people just don't understand what's actually happening when you encode and decode things. So let me show you guys um, like a way that you would do something like this, right? So what, what this is, is in theory kind of like uh, the raw Unicode. So now what we want to do is encode it. So like, let's say, um, we'll just call it encoded, I suppose. And uh, that's going to equal S dot encode. And then you put in here how you want to encode that. And in our case, we want to encode it in UTF-8. So then uh, we can print encoded. And for now, I'm going to comment this out so it doesn't do anything. And you can see how that looks, right? Because your console is going to try and your console basically has like these default settings and it's going to try its best to give you what you wanted. But a lot of times if you know what you're doing, it's not going to give you what you wanted. But don't worry about this for now. I know that sounds horrible, but just don't worry for now. So now let's uncomment this out and um, output. And this time all we want to do is write uh, in encoded. So then save that. And then we'll run this. And you see how the out, what the output looks like. But then when we actually open up that output file that will be in the same directory, you'll see that this is actually what you get. You get this. And this is this is what you wanted, right, as your output. Now, uh, let me close out of this. Now, obviously, this is what got printed to your console. So if you if you cared enough to fix that, you would you would print the raw Unicode right to your console. And obviously, uh, don't forget, well, there's a couple things that happen here. One is this backslash. Um, everything has to be, you know, a backslash U, and you want to precede it with a U. So like what would happen if we did this? Um, and then we'll uh, comment this out, comment this out, comment this out, comment that out. And we just had S. Well, it's going to print that, right? Because it's, it's going to treat it just like a string because that's the, that's the type you're telling um, Python what it is. So you add the U to it to tell it, hey, this is a Unicode string. And then now, obviously, when you print that to console, you get this. So if you wanted to also print to console, uh, you would print S to console, right? But then if you wanted to save that data, you would need to encode it into UTF-8 and save that data. Now, this is just the beginning of the entire process of how you would maybe handle this with, with Twitter. So I'm going to go through and do this entire thing uh, with specifically the Twitter stream. Uh, just because, like I said, every request has been not only for Arabic, but also with Twitter specifically. So this isn't, you know, a full completed Twitter tutorial. So uh, in the next video, we're going to be digging in a little bit further um, to working uh, using this kind of idea with, with Twitter and uh, how to do it. So anyway, uh, if this answers your question, then no need to carry on. But if you uh, still want to know how to use it with Twitter, uh, then feel free to carry on. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support, the subscription, and until next time.